The governor stood, took the oath of office to defend the Constitution, and by his side was the mayor of Detroit, Dave Bank. He yeah. pledged his support for that mayor. And now he wants to take over the mayor's city. He wants to take over the mayor's school district. He wants to run local government, local school districts, from Lansing rather than by the people we elected to run our school districts, to run our cities. And that's not right. You know, I should be grateful. I'm a small business owner. He wants to lower my taxes. Of course, the 80-year-old lady down the street's going to pay for that tax cut. You're right, that's not right. She shouldn't be paying for my tax cut. We shouldn't be driving seniors out. We shouldn't be arbitrarily invalidating elections. This is a democracy. We need everybody needs to be heard. My name is Dan Freakbaum, and I'm a firefighter with the city of Lansing. I'm proud of that. I believe my community be, should be safe and financially secure, and I'm here to speak out against these emergency financial manager proposals. It's just not right. It gives the emergency financial manager too much power. They don't have to be accountable to local citizens. They don't have to be accountable to local governments. There's no oversight under these proposals. I'm a 21-year career firefighter. I don't have a desk job. Statistically, every three days, somebody dies doing what I come to work to do. Under this bill, it's the emergency financial manager who will decide the risk I take. That's just not right. This bill is just big government taking away local control. We want government from the center, not dictatorship from the right, which is what this bill does. I strongly urge the Senate to vote against the emergency financial manager plan. Russ Williams has come down here all the way from the city of Nagani. Whoa, long drive. He is the foreman with the Public Works Department in the city of Nagani, where I think the snow season ends in about another two months. Maybe three. I'm a member of Ask Me 1415, okay? And we believe that we have the right to decide who decides for our city. I get to elect my city councilman, and they decide. This guy wants to put a king over the city of Nagani, and he's going to tell us how to do things, and then we got to pay this guy, okay? And they decide what we're going to pay this guy, instead of giving our plow drivers money so we can get out or letting us work overtime. They want to have some guy bring in contractors that don't know anything about plowing the city of Nagani. Our employees, they come out at 3 a.m. when the snow is falling. They work until the snow stops. Um, what more can you ask for? We're not going to be able to do this under this bill. And we need to maintain local control of our streets and the city of Nagani and every other city in the United States. Yeah! Let's have one quick huge round of applause for those very, very courageous senators from the state of Wisconsin who are temporarily using the state of They're willing to talk with their 
governor, but their governor is not willing to talk with them because in some states and in some areas, elections just don't matter. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Let me hear you scream. Yeah. I'm Pastor David Bullock, pastor of the Greater St. Matthew Baptist Church in Highland Park. Worked with Rainbow Push Detroit in Detroit. And we're here today to say we're not going to take it anymore. There was a dream called America. A dream called democracy. A dream that said God didn't give kings the divine right to rule. But that everybody could rule themselves. And that dream is a dream I believe in. A dream that I can think for myself. I can protect myself. I can vision for myself. And that when I come together with others like myself, we can work together to build the best community that we're going to live in together. Now, now in Egypt, they're fighting for that dream. In Libya, they're fighting for that dream. Because the world learned from Alabama. The world learned from Selma. But now we've gone from Governor Wallace in Alabama to Governor Walker in Wisconsin. We're here today to say we don't need kings. We don't need nobles. We don't need aristocrats. Those are just another name for emergency financial managers. Anytime somebody puts somebody over you and you don't have the ability to tell them and check them about your situation and how they're dealing with your job or your contract or your pension or your school, that sounds like a king to me. And we're here today to say we don't need kings in America. We don't need kings in Michigan. We don't need kings in Wisconsin. is more democracy. We need more democracy. Let me say this because we got to go inside and we have to we have to let them know that we're not just outside but we can go inside too. But let me say this. Let me say this. We must we must we must fight this thing until the end. Let me say this. This is just the beginning of this fight. This is just the beginning. The attack on the American worker, the attack on the American dream, the attack on American benefits. I'm tired of the argument that says after we work all of our lives and give our blood, sweat, and tears, we don't deserve a pension in health care. I'm tired of that argument. I'm tired of the argument that says that teachers are the problem with education. I'm tired of the argument that says budgets should be balanced on the backs of the poor and the workers and not on the backs of big business. I'm tired of What do you do when you get tired? What do you do when you get fed up? What do you do when you had enough? You march, you vote, you fight back, you email, you Facebook, you text message, you make signs, and you don't stop until you take back what's yours. Take back what's yours. Take back what's yours. Take back what's yours. Let me hear you scream. Let's go inside and take.
Take it back. Fire Department. I'm Andrew Alexiak, first vice president of the local 750. And uh, the firefighters and the police unions and UAW were out here today to try to protect the workers' rights. Essentially, what's happening right now is it's an all out attack 
on the middle class and the working people. The emergency financial manager legislation that they're trying to put through the Senate today, and they're trying to uh, push it so it's uh, in effect by the end of the month, really, is uh, affecting all of the public safety and all the uh, working class people. They want to bankrupt these cities purposely so they can bring in the financial managers to bust up the unions and start fresh. I don't know about you, but anybody can balance a budget if there's no rules or restraint used. If they're going to cut staffing and cut wages, it's just going to create a bigger problem in Michigan, and we want to get the word out so we can try to prevent it. They're trying to do a lot of the same things. I mean, it's an outright attack in Wisconsin where, you know, they've basically openly declared, declared war on the unions and working class people. But in Michigan, they've tried to push a lot of backdoor type deals through here, and they've try to quietly push some bills through legislation to where they can circumvent a lot of the problems they've had in Wisconsin with the protesting. And uh, <clears throat> there have been some states that it's kind of slowed down, but uh, I know recently in Ohio they've passed the, these laws and uh, it spells doom for a lot of the middle class. You know, I've always been taught to expect the worst, hope for the best, and uh, it's a real grab bag right now. The, the vote passed uh, the uh, House with about two-thirds majority, and I'm hoping it doesn't pass the Senate, and I hope that we've put up enough of a fight to where the people realize that it's important for us to keep these bills in act, or uh, <clears throat> to keep these bills from being repealed, excuse me. And uh, I hope it doesn't pass here, but I think there is a good likelihood of it passing. Well, the firefighter situation, what's going to happen is they're going to send in an emergency financial manager that they're giving the powers to even appoint the local authorities, people that really have put the cities in a lot of cases in these problems that we have already, in the authority to negate contracts and just do whatever they please. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to have communities all over Michigan because they're reducing the amount of revenue sharing that these communities are getting are going to be pressed into this uh, corner and they're going to allow the state is going to allow them this EFM power and they're going to come in and they're going to tear up their contracts without any uh, rights to us to collectively bargain and we're going to be getting axed. There's going to be less firemen and your firemen aren't going to be getting the benefits that we've worked for and you're going to be making eight dollars an hour like the person at McDonald's and it you know, it's a dangerous job, you know, police, fire, EMS, all those jobs are necessary for, you know, the betterment of a community. And what they're doing is they're, they're hamstringing us, they're kicking the legs out from underneath us and not giving us the ability for a fair job, fair wage. Yeah, it's always nice to see the showing and uh, actually I'm kind of, I, there are a lot of people out here, but I'm kind of surprised there weren't even more. Uh, but it's definitely encouraging and hopefully it doesn't get to the point where it is in Wisconsin. My name is Jackie Little and I'm from Owasso. My baby brings me out here today. I want my baby to have a better life than I had. And this is not the way that it's going to get done. I'm not working right now, but I was a teacher for 18 years. So, it's... Still no teachers? Oh yeah, I'm still quite involved with the MEA and working with them. and give it all to the corporations. They're just as loud and enthusiastic, but I think we're going to have quite a few more rallies. So I think we're all set with people being able to come to what they can come to. And they very well understand that the bill's way overreach, and it's about democracy. You heard these people chanting, we're here for the kids when the kids came by, and you heard them chanting, this is our house. Those bills are not our democracy, and I think that message is being given loud and, loud and clear.